So yeah, uh, I'll, I'll be speaking um, a little bit about uh, the H2O uh, project. Um, um, you know, my, my name is Merrick. Uh, we also got Trang um, joining us as well. He's, uh, as that Angela mentioned, he's, uh, you know, a, a longtime contributor to the, the, the token engineering space. And we're really happy to have him aboard uh, the H2O project. Is my, is my voice still okay? It's perfect. Okay, okay wonderful, wonderful. Um, and, you know, so I, I'm going to talk about sort of a new new research direction that we just sort of, you know, through conversations I've had with, uh, you know, with uh, with Angela at uh, Token Engineering Commons, is sort of unearthed, I would say, a pretty interesting, um, you know, research direction. And um, certainly, you know, um, we, we take, you know, token engineering simulation, evidence-based decision making, uh, you know, I would say very seriously. So, you know, I just I think it's you know I'm very excited about the, the work that Trang has done on uh, you know simulating the H2O project and uh, although <clears throat> you know although you know this this new research direction is you know fairly new and we haven't had time to do simulations uh, yet uh, develop models yet for it um, you know you'll sort of get an idea of the kind of work that we, we are doing um, in, in modeling um, from, from Trang sort of at the end so I'm I'm going to just sort of you know, you know, talk a little bit about myself and where we're from. Um, you know, so I'm I'm with the the New Order Project, which is a an incubation DAO that just launched. Um, you know, we we sort of got a, a a thesis where we believe that we're you know this is the, we believe that this sort of you know DAO um, is going to be the future of of the venture studio and and how you know projects get incubated and built. And so we've got to focus on um, machine intelligent DeFi multi-chain DeFi and, and especially new asset classes. And so that new, this idea of new asset classes is sort of actually what ties uh, all this all this stuff together. Uh, we actually just launched this week um, our, uh, like on, on, on Sushi Miso and we're actually rolling out the DAO today. So if you can see kind of maybe bags under my eyes or you know, I'm a little bit slow to respond today. It's just, you know, project launch day, right? I, I thought like by, by today, everything would sort of blow over. I think it'd be cool. You know, it's, <laughs> that was, that was much, uh, too, 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 too optimistic. But anyway, uh, yeah, so we're launching and we also are already have three incubated projects, a project called Optify, uh, which uses machine directed search to, um, you know, across, um, you know, hundreds of thousands of multi multi stage, you know, DeFi strategies to find the most optimal ones in real time, the highest yields in real time. We've got Redacted, that's a, a money Lego for the Curve ecosystem. And the one that I'm going to talk about today is a third incubated project that Trang is very heavily involved in. Um, the the H two O stable asset project. So you know, I, I personally have been very interested in you know data as as a new asset class. And you know, if you're wondering what ties you know this um, you know this this, this venture DAO with with H two O is really this interest in um, you know data as a, as a as a as a sort of a new new asset class, especially with regards to um, you know, it's used for, for, for DeFi and, and how that in turn can be used for incentives. This is actually a cover from a very, very famous report on, um, on, 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 uh, the data as a new asset class from 2011. So it's actually very prescient because these are the sort of things that we're talking about today. Uh, and it sort of goes back 10 years and I read it and it sort of just really blew my mind about 10 years ago. So I've been, I've been really interested in data as an asset class and, and, you know, now, now there's sort of this opportunity to explore this further. So what, what is, what is H2O? What is a stable asset? Um, you know, so uh, a, a stable asset, it sort of differentiates, it, I would say itself from, from a stable coin in that um, it's, the, the idea is that it's not pegged to any particular, um, any particular fiat denomination. So instead of it's, you know, targeting, let's say like one US dollar or one Euro or whatever, um, instead the, this sort of new class of, of stable assets um, attempts to be stable with respect to its current price. And it actually, um, uh, uh, it, it actually, you know, relies on a pretty clever mechanism to, um, to uh, achieve that. Um, you know, I, I, I actually spent a year at block science and, you know, I'm, I've been sort of converted by, by, by Michael's argument to sort of like this, uh, uh, you know, disciple of, uh, you know, control theory and control systems. And so it uses, uh, in, in order to remain stable, it, it uses sort of a very famous controller from um, control theory, the, the PID controller, the proportional integrative uh, derivative controller. And then what it does is it adjusts, you know, different different DeFi parameters, specifically the, the redemption rate in order to 
um, you know, uh, sort of incentivize movement up or down in order to just sort of be a control signal to, to, to compensate for short-term changes in price. And how H2O fits in, or maybe what's a little bit novel about it, is it's a, uh, a, a, gonna be a medium of exchange for the ocean market, uh, a, a unit of account for the, the ocean market, which is this, this, this data marketplace where, where, where you know, access to data is uh, you know, sort of bought and sold. Uh, we foresee you know, different DeFi uses for uh, H2O. Uh, V1 of, of the H2O stable asset is going to be backed by uh, the ocean token. V2 and V2 is going to be backed by the ocean by uh, data tokens as well. So, kind of how, how does it work, and you know what, what is this new interesting um, you know sort of research direction, right? So this is sort of the way the H2O works within the ocean ecosystem, and um, you know so basically the idea is that you know you, you've got a token, the ocean token. It can actually, it's actually a DAO, happens to be a DAO governance token. It also has utilities that I won't get into, various utilities within the ocean marketplace itself, which is a data marketplace. So this on the right-hand side is sort of like what, what we're building out right now with, with Trang's help, um, which is, you know, um, this ocean token can actually be deposited into what's called a safe, an H2O safe as sort of a collateral in order to mint or borrow H2O, which is the stable asset, right? The stable, stable asset, um, you know, which is a, um, you know, going to be a, a medium of exchange and unit of account on, on the ocean market. So, you know, those are probably familiar terms to, to folks in, in this audience, right? Medium of exchange being this idea that it's, you know, sort of like a, like a, like a token or something that's, that's used, you know, in order to facilitate trade, right? Trade between, you know, multiple parties. And maybe, maybe more interestingly, Right, we we were targeting it to sort of be a dominant um, unit of account for data in the sense that you know data is valued in this in this token as well, and so um, you know maybe if I could describe the rest of the system, um, the H two O platform is you know a series of smart contracts. It's, it's based on on MakerDAO that manages these uh, these safes, and um, you know there's a governance token. It has its own governance token that I don't want to get into. Actually, they call it an ungovernance token, but so I don't want to. Just want to, you know, um, not talk about that for, for 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 the purpose of this this presentation. But um, the, the idea too is that you know H two O the the stable asset is going to have you know a use in DeFi, including things like liquidity pools, um, you know, um, and which you know upon deposit into some DeFi applications, oftentimes what you'll have is you'll have an LP token, which is like it's called a liquidity provider token. These also takes other forms as well. And the idea is that. You know, when you participate in DeFi apps, you, you you earn fees for for certain actions, right? Sometimes you're on the consumer side, you're paying the fees. Other times, you're you're earning fees. Now, what this interesting, I think, change in direction is, and you'll notice, I sort of took Ocean out of this because you know this is something that I think you know we may try to convince Ocean to investigate, right? The Ocean DAO would would probably have to pass this as a proposal, but um, you know it's sort of bolting on this idea of um, you know kind of Using DeFi, um, using I would say DeFi concepts and, and and features to sort of you know incentivize you know people to be both liquidity providers and participants in, in DeFi, but also be able to use the um, the so-called LP tokens or you know other sort of deposit tokens in actual governance, right? So it's sort of like both the you know these the, the stable coins are derivative of the governance token, right? Governance tokens again you know deposited in order to mint this other token. They're not only derivatives in the sense of, of financial derivatives, but they're also kind of like derivative products in the sense of, of governance as well. And and we think that you know there's a lot of way to go like it's very early stages, right? But the idea is that perhaps you know with some clever mechanisms you can actually have your cake and eat it too. Um, I've sort of already talked about you know these 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 concepts earlier, um, but I guess the idea is that um, you know it, there's a potential there to, to align you know um, incentives between DeFi applications and reward staking, um, you know, and also um, you know the ability to influence the um, the DAO, uh, the, you know, the governance itself. And so you know where we think where we currently think this sort of approach might make the most sense is um, you know ecosystems where the token is sort of already very closely tied to, um, you know, you know, different fees and, and, and applications that people like actually want to use, right? So examples might be like the Curve DAO 
or, or ocean marketplace and, and so forth. So, um, you know, I, I, I kind of came here to sort of maybe talk about an interesting problem, an interesting, you know, new direction to explore. Um, we'd love to, you know, have, have people join us on our, our quest in order to explore this space. And, uh, you know, also, we're also kind of heavily looking to, you know, perhaps doing a hackathon uh, around general topics in token engineering or, and certainly also in terms of, you know, funding some grants. So um, we'd love to work with, um, you know, um, the, the, the token engineering community more, more closely in the future. Um, just to sort of talk, I would say briefly about some of the, the simulations that we've are, we're already doing, right? Just to demonstrate like, you know, that we are very serious about token engineering, just trying a few, maybe in two, three minutes, can just talk about some of the excellent, you know, simulation work that you've been doing. I'm gonna go off screen share and let you share. Um, yeah, sure. Um, thanks, Marek, for introducing and uh, thank Angela for, for having me here. Um, so in terms of simulating, um, I'm going to share my screen. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's thanks to uh, Block Science and a Reflexer um, team that we have a framework to um, call GB simulation, which um, is essentially a CAD CAD model to simulate a um, a framework that to um, implement a, a stable coin, um, and um, there we we apply um, like token engineering methodology to um, integrate a a thing called PID controller um, to the GAB system, um, and select parameter and there's a lot of um, uncertainty, a lot of um, prior fluctuation or liquidity man or, or yeah, sort of. Um, PID controller is pretty much a, um, to me is a mature um, theory or mature uh, application in, in a lot of entering um, field, but I think it's the first time it's applied in, uh, in, in token land and, um, in in the GAB system, what it control is essentially a um, redemption price, which is a um, a price within the system, and to bring it as close as to to the market price, which is what people sell on Uniswap or or, or other secondary market. Um, so essentially, what is is what 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 is what is tuning what the controller is tuning. Um, and in the simulation, we have a lot of, of um, environment uh, parameter, um, like the price of collateral and um, liquidity demand, how people are going to buy and how people are going to sell um, assets, which we have no control whatsoever. Um, and in the simulation, we have um, agent, which will act as um, um, like buying and selling and minting stable assets. Um, in different circumstances. Um, so the so controller is actually um, kind of rewarding uh, people to, um, to buy and sell and then bring back the, the, um, um, the market price towards the redemption price without any patch. So this is why it, it's the, the essential um, mechanism of, of um, um, of just stable um, uh, mechanism without any pet. Um, so um, with S2O, um, because um, the, the collateral is, is um, eventually because it's gonna be ocean and um, we, we simulate um, like simulated, um, I mean, we feed the GAB system with simulated ocean uh, USD price. Um, so we, we have Monte Carlo simulation, which is um, kind of a one method for, for selecting um, parameter in, in um, uncertainty. Um, and um, what we introduce new here is um, a, um, a new agent which um, frequently um, creating new um, depth per season. Um, the reason why we introduce it is because um, within a ocean ecosystem, there's a lot of, of um, like last year when they introduced a V3 uh, market, there's a lot of activity um, first when, when they um, introduce a V3 um, data market. 
and um, we we launch this um, um, stable coin just just in time that ocean is gonna gonna introduce V4 ocean market so it's we expect something that um, quite similar in last year there's um, a lot of, of activity will we happen so um, that's kind of kind of um, parameter we we consider um, um, kind of um, try to avoid um, catastrophic um, at, at the beginning. Um, and um, yeah, I think that that's um, pretty much um, about the simulation. And maybe just one more thing to add on uh, um, on what uh, Marek is talk about ocean. Um, so the thing is ocean, um, ocean Dow is kind of a, um, they orient uh, they orient um, themselves as a a grand Dow. Uh, I mean <laughs> grand Dow. I mean I mean they I mean every month they will they will have a grant to um, incentivize people to to build on on top of ocean to build data set to build I mean to to um, um, to participate in in um, in, in the market. So. Um, having having a um, a stable assets instead of instead of, of ocean itself is is a huge um, plus for like incentivize people to to be on top of ocean and and having something that's stable something that that they can um, I mean not affect by by market um, yes one of one of the more um, one, one of the more um, things that I just want to add on top of, of what um, um, yeah. Uh, Marriage stuff, yeah.